You can tell the weather's better today because Alfie's decided he wants to go for a walk. As some of you know from previous videos, I'm looking after him for a friend at the moment. He's in Australia. So I've got him for another couple of weeks yet. And most of the time, he doesn't want to come out. He sort of looks at the weather, looks at the lead and gives me evils. Definite evils. Like, you're not getting me out there, fat boy. Um, but today, I think because he's been lying in the sunshine most of the day, he's reinvigorated. The sap is rising, springs in the air. And he's thought, yep, let's go out for a walk. Because he literally raced me to the front door of the house. So here we are on what is a beautiful day. Well, hello there. Welcome to Colgonology on this March the 5th, which is St Pyrrhon's Day, which probably doesn't mean a lot to many of you, but for me as a Cornishman, it's my national day. It's as important to me as St Andrew's Day is to the Scots, St Patrick is to the Irish, and uh, St David's is to the Welsh. Not quite so sure with the English and St George, there's a bit of a troubled relationship there, but um, I shall be celebrating later. This time last year, I walked through these fields flying a big Cornish flag, and it looked like this. Yeah, I decided not to do that this year, but I am going to be celebrating tonight with a great big pasty that's been sent up from Cornwall from Hale, which is the town down there that my mother still lives in. And uh, it's from a particular baker's called Philps, and I'm very fond of their pasties. Probably in the top five pasty producers I've ever tasted in Cornwall. So today is all laid out for me. Walk, pasty, indigestion, bicycle on standby. Oh, here we are, look, some jelly ears, or wood ears, uh, as we, uh, some people call them. Um, a little bit past their prime. Could probably still be dried and used as an ingredient in soups, but uh, apparently the Chinese and Japanese love them. But for me, they're a little bit bland, so I shan't bother. There's better pickings elsewhere. Talking of which, I'm gonna go and see if any other wild garlic's coming up yet. Well, no flowers on the three-cornered leek yet. Can't even see any flower buds coming up. Oh well, in amongst all these bluebells here in Lords and Ladies. And uh, still not seeing any signs of wild garlic. It's very slow this year. Oh, first little primrose there. That's the first little primrose I've seen this year. Wild one. Lovely. Let's go look at our wild garlic beds. Mm. What we got here? Lords and Ladies. Snowdrops. More loads and ladies. Those are daffodils. Still nothing. Maybe we're gonna have a fallow year where we're not gonna get any. That'll be a bugger. I do like my wild garlic every year. It's a weird thing, isn't it, about St. George? I mean, it's an odd choice of a patron saint anyway, because A, we're not even entirely sure that he existed. I mean, if he did, he was probably a Roman soldier, a mercenary soldier. But, you know, even if he did exist, he never once set foot in the UK. So he's a very odd choice, a patron saint. Um, to make matters even worse, everything tied up with St George and the flag of St George is about conquest and, and martial um, matters. You know, it's like uh, Richard the Lionheart, who was French anyway. Uh, you know, he went off into the Crusades flying the flag of St George because he claimed he'd had a vision of St George before he went into battle. Um, and, you know, the flag of St George was used a lot on attempts to conquer, you know, the sort of the Scots and the Welsh and the Cornish and, and all the Celtic nations that have still managed to cling on to their identity. So consequently, you know, when people say we should be celebrating St George's Day, I, I kind of understand the difficulty that people have with what you're actually celebrating. Because it seems that, you know, when people want to celebrate being English, they do so in terms of things that they've done against other people uh, you know which is a which is a less positive way of celebrating englishness than say you know the scots celebrate their national day or the or the irish or whatever um i cannot but feel they should have stuck with their original saint saint edmund you see saint edmund was actually 
an Englishman and he actually died defending England from invaders. Uh, he was the original English saint before uh, the French imposed St George on us, you know. Um, or the French kings, I should say, who ruled England. I mean, they ruled England for 400 years and they're the people who brought St George in here. So maybe, you know, as a, as a sort of reassessment of British identity, what we should be doing is saying to hell with what the French told us to do. Let's get St Edmund back and celebrate being English. The very political structure of the country also doesn't help matters, it really doesn't. You know, in America, they all know they're American and that's all there is to it. In France, they all know they're French and that's it. In Scotland, they've got a Scottish Parliament. In Wales, they've got a Welsh Assembly. In Cornwall, they've got a unitary authority. And Ireland's got their own government as well. And these places can make decisions on behalf of their individual respective countries. England doesn't have a Parliament. England doesn't have a representative body. And I can understand why the English feel disenfranchised, because any decisions being made for them are being made by the British government for the whole of Britain and not just for England. And um, that's the issue we've got. That is the issue we've got in the fact that, you know, the Scots, the Welsh, the Irish, everyone else, the Celtic nations, let's call them, are quite happy with who they are and celebrating who they are. But the English don't know who they are. I think Jeremy Della said that not so long ago, the Turner Prize winning artist. He said the English don't know who they are because they're English, but the government seems to want them to be British and nothing else. It's such a shame. Do you know what? I love an allotment. I love the whole DIY nature of it. And it harks back to the days of the commons before the acts of enclosure when, you know, British people had the right to farm on commons land. And what they grew was for their use and they did a bit of swapping with each other as well. This is the only part that remains of the commons now, really. In the fact that, you know, this may be owned by the local authority, but it's, uh, it's farmed by the people for the people. That's what the commons was all about. But we've kind of lost that. The Axe of Enclosure basically took away uh, huge amounts of land from the British people where it had always been their right to walk on it. In fact, we were left with just 20%. Just 20% of Britain was left that the British people could actually walk on there because somehow someone with a lot of money said, I now own this mountain or I now own this river or I now own this forest. I mean, how does that work? How can you own a mountain, for Christ's sake? But that's what happened, and we're stuck with it. I'm sad to say that 40% uh, of the country is owned by less than 1% of the population. It's a terrible thing. Well, there you go. A bit of a different colgonology today, but uh, a little bit political, I suppose, but it wasn't meant to be negative in any way. Um, I just think that there should be a way for England to be able to celebrate England, for the English to be able to have a national day of celebration that hasn't got all that baggage of the past and also doesn't empower the racists. Between you and me, I think younger people have already sussed this out. I think that's why there's been a massive upsurge of interest in folk culture. You know, young people are, are joining Morris dancing sides and they're taking part in old festivals and they're reviving old festivals. And they're, they're getting out there and walking amongst ancient stones and they're going wassailing. And I think some of this is all about finding an identity. Because this is a way of celebrating England, really old England. And I'm not discounting the fact you can do the same in Wales or Scotland or whatever. But I think it's a way of celebrating old England, brilliant old England, in a way that doesn't carry all the baggage, you know, because it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, whether you're black or white, whether you're gay, straight, bisexual, trans, doesn't matter if you're male or female, doesn't matter if you're old or young, you can still celebrate English history. And I think that is also a way of celebrating English identity and celebrating what a wonderful, wonderful thing it is and the fantastic history that England has without all the jingoism and without all the conquest and the imperialism. That's a very positive way forward, I think. And the more I see that happening, I think the better things will get. There's hope. I think things have turned a corner. Things are going to get better. And on that positive note, I'll bid you a farewell. Toodle-pip. Back to the normal dog walking next time.